had the opportunity to test a very early prototype of Tyga's Nomad electric snowmobile a few seasons ago. Since then, the Nomad has been refined and improved in every way. We visited Tyga headquarters in Montreal, Quebec, where Tyga's Vice President of Electrification Operations, Doug Braswell, gave us a detailed look at what's different and what's improved on the latest version of the Nomad. Hey Snowtracks YouTubers, here we are at world headquarters of Tyga. And we have with us as our uh, highly valued guest, the Vice President of Electrification Operations, Mr. Doug Braswell, who I happen to have known for many, many years. And he is an absolute resource that we're privileged to have today to help us do this walk around. So you're gonna take us through basically what has been updated and changed and improved and perfected on this Nomad since the last time we rode one, which was a couple of years ago, which are pretty early. Those were early prototypes. Early prototypes, and, yeah. And uh, you know, we, we came with a, a really good offering at that time, and I think you guys walked away with a really good feeling about what you got to ride. In 22, we went to production with the Nomad. It was a completely different vehicle than you guys mm -hmm. rode at that time. Fit and finish of this vehicle, I would put it and say that it's substantially better than some other well-established snowmobile manufacturers in the industry right now. And we said before with the ones you brought us and we rode two years ago, that we were pretty impressed with the fit and finish. I'm not just impressed, I'm shocked with how good this is. Blown away would be a better way to talk about it. And we have a, have a great group out on our assembly line that spends a lot of time, but yet they get those panels on there, down the next station mm -hmm. it goes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did from last year to this year is that we've improved the lens that goes over our lights. These are probably some of the best lights that I've ever ridden at night. Going to the windshield, this windshield was a huge improvement from where we were last year. It provided protection, but this goes the next step. It provides good frontal protection and it keeps your hands warm. And it's not one of those windshields that when you're sitting on it, no matter what your height is, you're not looking through either the top of the windshield or over the windshield. Right. You're not doing one of these to yeah, uh, see where you're going. Right. So it, it really turned out well. And just, just like the body, the fit and finish of it just goes together. You have now included a heat advisor outlet. And is that across all, all sleds that you're gonna sell are gonna come with that? Yes. Okay, that's a, that's a great thing. Okay, now I was just switching through and I noticed you've renamed your modes and I really like it. Yeah. I like that the, the, I like that the base mode, I guess I'm gonna call it, is high range, which makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. that's what you're going for. I mean, people like to call it eco, but at the end of the day, eco doesn't really fit what the purpose of that mode is. Right. Range mode is what you're selecting. This is, I can go the furthest. Then the next one is sport, which again makes a lot of sense because if you're not gonna go slow to get range, I wanna ride fast and have fun. So sport makes sense, but then the last one is my favorite, uh, wild mode. Tell me about wild mode. Hold on tight. One of the things that I, I think about when I go from a range to the to the sport to the wild is more of the you know going coming from a gas sled. You're going from about a 440 type of performance in the range mode. You get to sport, you're more in that 125 horsepower type of feel. Mm -hmm. But when you hit wild, that's it. It's wild. <laughs> it's crazy wild. Cool. The light on on start, uh, stop, and that kill switch down, nothing's gonna happen if your kid jumps on it and squeezes the flipper. That's correct. Okay. And even if that happens to be on, it's still not gonna do anything. Why? It's because it's, it's off. It's oh. in neutral. Okay. All right. Has to be green. Has to be green and the screen turns blue. Okay. How do you make that light go out? That's the end of the day. It's all over with. Okay. <laughs> System is neutralized. Yeah, like if it's on and you're riding, you pull the tether, what mode it, does it go into? It's, it's, it just shuts it off. It, it goes back to the non, it goes back so to the So screen's still on, but, but screen's it's, still on. it's not. Okay, yeah. right on. Yeah. It's nothing more than if you hit the emergency kill. Okay, gotcha. Now there's some new stuff here with charging too, right? Absolutely. We've got uh, underneath this cover is our charge port. You're sliding your uh, charger gun right. in and out of there. So this port right here is for your 110 and 240 charging, okay. level one and two. Back here is for your uh, DC fast charge, mm -hmm. which is 
something that we're, we're, we've got in beta right now, mm -hmm. but it is really working well. We're able to go from zero to 80% charge in about 30 minutes. Wow. You can leave it on there for a little longer. It slows it down because you don't want that big end rush at the end of, of uh, charging your battery. Because mm -hmm. you're maintaining the, the temperature of your battery, you don't want that last little bit to get real hot. Real hot yeah, like yeah, that. Okay. So. Now, as it stands right now, the, the products you've delivered and the ones you're building don't have DC fast charging enabled, but it can happen wirelessly with just as an update over the air. Correct. So for anybody who has one, once the beta is done and, and you've validated it, it just starts to work on everybody else's unit. It will work on all of them that have been equipped with okay. all three of the levels of chargers. Gotcha. Some of them from last year won't have the DC fast charging. Doesn't charge. have the extra little plug. Right. But anything that has the plug, it will work and you don't have to do anything about it. You don't exactly. have to take it to a dealer, you don't have to do nothing. It just all of a sudden, boom, it starts you're working. You're gonna get a notification that you're gonna get an over the air I love that. Uh, update. Now let's take a look at where the feet go on this. I think that's one of the things that uh, are sometimes overlooked is the how, how well you're able to plant yourself on the snowmobile. So for 23, we've added an extra width of this extrusion right here and not see any flex to it. Okay. We've, we've reoriented the, uh, the traction elements in the, in the running boards so that uh, your feet are able to move forward a little easier and yet keep them from going back when you're going around the corner. Those are some pretty aggressive looking running boards. It's got a completely whole new skid frame. It's uh, got welded uh, steel tube. It's got a different geometry and it also, we've done some spring rate changes on it. So not only does it ride maybe a little smoother than the ones you guys run, it also carries a load much, much better. So whether you're riding one up or two up, you'll really feel the stability of the sled because of the way the uh, rate ramps into it. This cool. looks like it's coupling. It does couple. It does have a coupling system on it. So it's so coupling we're, rear to front. We're able to pick, soften up the springs a little bit. Yeah. But yet when we couple, we'll be able to take advantage of both the front and the rear. We're, um, What's the length of this one? This is a 154 track. Okay. It's 16 wide. So that's a big difference from last year. Well, this is a 1.6 Cobra with the ice ripper. With pre-studded. Yes. So that's a, that's a serious track. That's, that's no messing around. No. Yeah. It's amazing going around the corners. You think about some of these really well-traveled uh, trails here in Quebec. They do get fairly icy corners as much as they, as they keep them groomed. And so with this, this track on there, it just keeps you planted. You feel very comfortable. You feel very confident going through the corner. Now, one thing I notice is that the battery housing is now, it's not carbon fiber. Closure now is injected molded plastic. Okay. The battery layout is different than the one that okay. you Okay, so wrote. internally it's different too. It's internally, it's laid out differently and we've also moved the battery ahead some more. Okay. So it's helping centralize that mess. The liquid cooling, I, we were talking in the factory about the absence of oil and I said, yeah, no antifreeze in the factory tour. They said, no, no, there is a cooling system. Talk a bit about that. So not only is the battery cooled, the charger's cooled and also the motor's cooled. And they all share the same thermal uh, system, but yet it's valved so that when one gets warmer than the other, it equalizes the, the temperature of the battery. Cold temperatures are hard on batteries because batteries don't work good when they're cold, but you found a way to heat the battery so that it's at its optimal temperature without draining the battery in the process or, or excessively draining the battery in the process. Yeah. The heater is a, a part of the thermal system mm -hmm. and when it requires that it, it needs the heat, then just for a moment it comes on just enough to bring it up to that stabilization mm -hmm. uh, temperature that we're looking for within the entire pack. Okay, so another thing we weren't allowed to talk about, we are this time, but we weren't before, is how the power comes off the end of the electric motor and gets down to the drive axle. Just explain that transition. It's a belt drive. It's a positive displacement. Okay, are you talking a CVT belt? Not a CVT belt. It's the cog type of belt that you see in some of the other um, mountain performance sleds that are out there. But this is a true positive display drive type of belt. But there's no jack shaft. No jack shaft. So it drives from the motor sprocket to the tooth belt to the drive axle on the right side. Yes. No, tran no transmission, no, no gears to go through, no chain, no oil. It's a positive drive belt that goes from the electric motor to the drive shaft that turns the track. No slip zero. No, yeah. no CVT feel. That's how we were able to move off of the, uh, the dead spot and just move. Well, and a belt so drive doesn't need to be 
tightened or adjusted, right? No, it has a has a backside idler on it mm -hmm. uh, that's adjusted from the factory, and uh, for all our testing shows that uh, once it's adjusted, it stays it stays within mm -hmm. adjustment. Well, Doug, you've done a great job of uh, enlightening us, and we sure appreciate being able to uh, get inside your head with this because I know it's uh, it's occupying a lot of your enthusiasm and you've, you've done a great job as well working on this. And to the whole crew at Taiga, this yeah. is a remarkable vehicle for the amount of time you've had to go into it and um, obviously the people who are designing this and building the snowmobile know what snowmobilers want, know, know what a snowmobile is and what it should be so uh, very very impressive and again as Mark said thank you so much for taking the time to go through it with us. Um, the next step, the only thing that is left is for us to actually ride it. You're going to be very, very impressed. I can't wait. It's a good ride. Thanks, man.